Hello and welcome to Mastering in the Box. In this week's video, we continue the series Mastering in Studio One Five by taking a further look at the song page and the project page and how we can use them both for mastering and what some of the benefits and differences are between each page. Hello and welcome to Mastering in the Box. I am your host Smudge and in this week's video we're going to take a further look at mastering inside of the song page, inside of the project page, how we can do a hybrid between the two and I'm going to show you five benefits of each page and how you can get the most out of your mastering using both the song page and the project page. Just before we dive into this week's content, if you'd like to know more about digital mastering, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell and select all so you receive notifications and all of our videos moving forward. So the first benefit of using the song page for mastering is the ability to use automation. Now at the time of recording, automation is not available in the project page. So if you're a mastering engineer and you use automation, then the song page is going to be your friend. And to use automation, all you do is you find the track that you want to apply some automation to. And actually on the track at the bottom, you have a little symbol that says expand envelopes. And if you click on that, you then have your automation lane. And you have the read, touch, latch and write functions. And then it's just literally you can go in and set your automation points and then just apply your automation as needed. So one advanced editing feature that isn't available in Studio One at present is spectral editing, which is the ability to really go in and remove unwanted frequencies. So if you were to get a file that had clicks, pops, some background noise that you didn't want, you could use something like a spectral editor to go in and actually remove those clicks, pops and that unwanted noise. What we do have in Studio One is the ability to perform a function called clip gain envelopes, and you can use it in a very similar way. So how do we do that? If you see the name on the actual file itself, if you right click, you see the dialog box and you'll say a tick box for gain envelope. If you click that box, you will then see a line feature in the middle of the waveform, and that is the clip gain envelope. If you press the F2 function, and then you can really hone in on the waveform. And say, for example, this particular peak here, say that that was a click or a pop that I wanted to get rid of, we could use the cursor to highlight that particular area. And if you move the cursor above that peak, you can then just click and drag it down, and it's gonna reduce the volume of that particular clip gain so you can use it to really get in and micro edit the waveform so if you get any unwanted noise or any clicks and pops and you want to remove them this is when the clip gain function can really be used to good effect A really cool new feature inside of Studio One 5 is the ability to use mix scenes. And what mix scenes are is in essence, it's a snapshot in time of your mix or your master that you can save and you can compare against another mix scene. So what do we mean? So in this particular example, we have a compressor and an EQ on each of the individual songs. And let's just say that the compressor is sounding good, but not it's not wowing us. So what we want to do is compare this against another plugin. So what we can do is we can go down to the left hand side of the mix window and we can select mix scenes. Just make sure that the insert button is ticked and then we can click the plus button here and add a scene. Master one. And then what we can do is we can go through and we can remove the compressor from each of the tracks. And let's say we want to compare this against a fat channel. So let's just quickly, we'll add the fat channels in on each of the songs. And then we can then go back to our mix scenes, add a mix scene and call this Master 2. 
then what we can then do is just compare the two. If you click on Master 1, you'll then see it shows you the compressor. Click on Master 2, it then shows you the fat channel. Now this is a very simplified way of using the mix scenes, but let's say for example that you want to you want to get an understanding of how the overall volume of a track is affected. So if we were mastering a track to minus 14 LUFS and mastering the same track to minus 10 LUFS and you want to see the impact of what the limiter would do, simple. You can apply the limiter to the insert, you can then set the first limiter to minus 14 LUFS you can save the mix scene, you can increase the gain on the limiter, save a second mix scene, and you can then compare the two to see how the dynamics compare from the two different limiter settings. Stem mastering is a different form of mastering where rather than mastering a single stereo file, you will master stems. So, Let's say a mix engineer was to send you the stem for drums, a stem for bass, another one for guitars, vocals, and keys. Rather than mastering those as one single stereo file, you will master those as five different stems. Now, on face value, this could be good, or seem as good, because it can give you some extra flexibility. But it could also be seen as pseudo mixing. And certainly when it comes to mastering, I'm of the opinion that we need to be setting clear distinction between mixing and mastering, so we can really get the maximum of both disciplines. Now, if you are a fan of STEM mastering, you won't be able to do that in the project page inside of Studio One because you can't stack more than two files next to each other. So you have to do that in the song page, but you'll just treat it like you would do a regular mix song. So you open up a song, you then set your song title, set your where you want to save it, do your usual sample rate, resolution, etc., etc. I would untick the box for stretch audio files to song tempo and click OK. And it's treat it like a regular mix. So click on song, import files, say this is my stems. It's a little bit more files than I'd anticipate normally. But let's just say, for example, these are the stems. Click open, and there we are. You can go through and just start mastering your stems that way. One of the biggest criticisms of any form of digital processing is that sometimes the sound can be a little sterile. So if you want to add some character to a digital master inside of the song page in Studio One 5 Professional, then what we can do is use the console shaper. And how do we do that? If you look at the master channel inside of the the mix channel. You have the MixFS function at the top of the master chain here, and if you click on that, you then have the ability to add the console shaper. If you are a Persona Sphere member, you can also get the CTC1 extension as part of your Sphere membership. If you have a regular Studio One 5 professional license, then this can be purchased separately. But if you click on the console shaper, then what we can do is use this to add some drive, some saturation, or some noise to emulate that analog console sound. So if you just want to give it a little bit more character, you can really just focus on some more, say add some of that drive and noise to try and give you some more character. Another feature that is included on the console shaper is the crosstalk. But the crosstalk is more designed around recording and mixing. And the reason I say that is because it's emulating the noise that is generated off of the individual tracks off of a mix console. Now in a mastering context, we don't really want that, certainly in the way we got our project set up here, because we don't want different songs talking to each other. If we were stem mastering, then it may be different because we were then looking at different instruments rather than different songs. But if you're looking at mastering different songs as a project set up on the song page, then I wouldn't recommend crosstalk in this particular instance. One of the things that the project page really excels at is the ability to add in the metadata. And the metadata is in essence, is all of the information that needs to be added to the song files for 
if you're going to be exporting mp3 files so you can get your artwork onto the files you can get the song information onto the files if you're doing cd burns and you want to do a ddp file etc you can add some data there this is when you can start using your metadata to really give that information into your song files that give that more professional look now this may not be necessary if you were just going to do a digital release because a lot of the distribution platforms such as your distro kids your cd baby and your song traders etc they will all ask you to put in your own metadata on their websites and you can then upload your own artwork, etc., and they will do all that for you. But if you're doing MP3 files and if you're doing SoundCloud updates or you're doing CDs, then you want to add in the metadata on the project page. And the reason why I say do it on the project page, you can add some metadata in on the song page, but it will only be song specific. Whereas the project page, you can add in album metadata as well as the individual song metadata and it's really easy to do you see on the left hand side here you have the album name the artist name and the drop down box gives you more fields to fill in and you can add in the album artwork and then once you've done that if you want to add in different bits for the songs you can then do this with the little drop down boxes next to the song name as well so it's really easy and simple to do inside of the project page and it's a great feature that you can use for mastering <laughs> When it comes to file exporting, the project page just makes it so easy. And if you're looking at doing some form of CD run, you can get your DDP files and you can do that. Or if you're looking at some form of digital release, you just click on the digital release button and you have a lot of options. You can select what tracks you want to export, where you want to send them. You can select different file formats and it gives you some good options including WAV, FLAC, your MP3 if you want to download it for your own personal listening etc etc lots of different options you can also change the resolution and sample rate and then you can set how the track range is set and yeah lots of different things if you want to upload to Persona Sphere or if you want to do a direct upload to SoundCloud you can do it all from the digital release button on the project page <laughs> When it comes to file organizing, the project page just makes it so simple to do. So you've mastered your tracks, they're all inside the project page, but you're just not liking the flow of the EP or the album. Song number one is gonna be a great song for the end of the project. How do we do it? Simply just click on the song file on the left hand side of the screen and drag it to the bottom. Boom, it's now at the end of the project. Song three, I think that's gonna be a great song to start the project off. Easy, click it, drag, move and we now have got the project set up and it's organized in the way that we want it so if you're someone who records mixes and masters their own music then this is a great one for you so you've got your mix all done it's sounding great and now you want to export it out for mastering well you can do this really simply in studio one five by clicking on song and you can then add to project and then you can set up a new project which matches your song title it will then export it to the project page in the sample rate that you want you can set the directory as to where you want it to save it to and click OK. There, we've now got a project set up inside of the project page ready for mastering. Let's say we're in the middle of mastering and it's kind of like, the same just doesn't quite sound right. OK, the kick drum. The kick drum's just a little bit more too prominent in the mix. How do I change that? Easy. You see the wrench next to the song title, click on the wrench and it takes you back to the mix. You can then make your amendments, reduce the volume, change your EQ, compression settings, whatever you need to do, and then click Song, Update Mastering File, and it updates the mastering file in the project for you. Really nice and easy to do, and very flexible. Last but not least, one of the other great features about the project page is some of the more advanced metering functions. And 
there's lots of options available to us. So if you want to look at, say, the phase meter here, we can then look at the loudness meter at this part of the screen here. If you want to do it in peak and RMS, you've got your K readings, you've got your EBUR128 if you want to start looking at that LUFS example. And you can do on the right hand side, you can change between LUFS and LU to give you different ideas of the overall loudness. And then you've also got the loudness information. You can look pre effects and post effects. So you can look at how much headroom you have to play with, what your true peak readings are and your RMSs before your inserts, and then your post effects will give you your reading after your inserts. So you get some real good advanced metering functions available in the project page. You can still get some pretty good metering, um, you know, some metering functions inside the song page, but you will have to add those plugins in. There are some great standalone plugins available inside of Studio One you can use for metering, but the project page just gives it all to you straight up front without the need to add in additional plugins. When it comes to mastering inside of the Studio One, I really don't think it's a case of a better way or a worse way to do it. It's just there are different ways to do different things and I hope this video has given some real good techniques that you can use in your workflows to give you a more efficient process. I can explain the way that I will be doing it moving forward and that is to do all of the processing, all of the automation and all of the editing inside of the song page. I will then set up a project page from the song page file. I'll then do all of the final, the metadata and the file exporting and the file organizing. I will even set the fade ins and the fade outs in the project page because I can really just hone in on the transitions and the fades in the project page before exporting. So that is the more logical way of doing it from my workflow point of view. So I really hope you found this video useful and if you have please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below if you've taken some of these strategies and implemented it into your mastering workflow let me know because I'll be really keen to understand how you can take some of these away and how you're getting the benefits from them. If you want to know more about digital mastering, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and also hit that bell and select all to receive notifications and all of our videos moving forward. All that's left for me to say is I hope you'll keep safe and well and I'll see you in the next video coming real soon.